just saw myself on Facebook. That was weird. <laughs> Hello, good morning, <laughs> and welcome to, <laughs> welcome to the Reframe What's Possible podcast. This is a podcast where we talk about spirituality and metaphysics and reframing what's possible. Today, we have an amazing guest. Um, we have David Oliver, who is a Reiki master, a healer, a psychic medium, an all round, generally awesome guy. David is here today to talk to us about this really potent topic of turning our pain into power. Um, okay, and, and turning our lessons into blessings. So David, can you tell us about a core event that happened to you uh, and how you came to this realization that you could turn your darkest moment into an opportunity for healing and power and growth? Well, the first thing that really got me um, into the world of healing was a shop in Worcester where I grew up called uh, Still Waters. And it was the first time I've seen a shop that sold really nice crystals and spiritually related products presented in a professional kind of clean way. It, you know, because you sometimes had like the old hippie shops are a little bit dingy and a little bit dirty. Um, but this was properly um there's like massive pieces of amethyst in the window and it just drew you in and before I knew it I found myself walking through the door into the shop because I was just intrigued with what it was and I the lady at the counter greeted me and we didn't really say much else but then she came up to me and said there's someone who's practicing Reiki here today and you might like to try it and before I knew it I put my money in her hand and I walked down into the room um introduce myself to the practitioner and lay down and let him do his work. I just lay back and shut my eyes. And the feeling of the moving of the energy around me was tangible. And I was happy to let him do the work. And then once he'd finished, I left the shop, said my thanks and goodbyes, stood out in the um, corner of the kind of courtyard area and felt the sun on my skin. I felt my feet on the ground. I felt light, my head was clear. I just felt absolutely amazing. I never felt anything like it. And I knew that it wasn't because I expected anything. So I knew nothing about Reiki to begin with. So to feel that change in me really made an impact and made me realize how different life was compared to what I'd experienced previously. Mm, well, what had you experienced? So, what, what had you experienced? What, what, were you in pain when you walked when you were guided to go and get the healing? Were you suffering? Yeah, I, I was in a, a state of, I suppose, shock and depression. Um, my, my mother actually had passed away about six months before, mm. and I felt very. I felt like I was. The best way to describe it was like I was in the bubble. I didn't feel connected to the world around me at all. I felt like I was in this space of my own that I didn't want to be in but I kind of accepted that I was in because I assumed that it was just the grief process kind of keeping me um I, I'd almost say it was keeping me afloat because I didn't feel happy but I didn't feel necessarily miserable to anywhere near the point of not wanting to carry on my life but I just felt very much in the middle to everything and I was getting kind of fed up with it because I kind of understood why I was there but I wanted something different. I wanted to feel real again because the shock of it was so extreme. It was such a out of the blue thing that happened. Mm. Um, that I, I obviously, I don't want to dwell on it too much because it's not a pleasant subject, but mm. suffering bereavement is such an alien situation to be in because you, nothing can prepare you for it and nothing can really describe how you're going to feel about it. And I know everybody has different ways of reacting to it, but I think there is a constant similarity within it where it just seems to wipe out your um your energy and your enthusiasm for things mm. and your just ge general trust in life I feel um because it's something that you know it's, it's it's going to happen to everybody eventually but when it does happen it's probably the one thing that could ever happen that you really wish you could reverse but you can't it's happened and that's it and I think that's the harsh thing about it it's just no going back mm. so yeah basically I, I like I said I felt so disconnected and to feel reconnected to things in such a short space of time it'd only been half an hour in, in the session I think but I actually felt better than I ever had even before suffering that bereavement I felt better than I had in my whole life because yeah. it showed me the magic that can exist in this world and it's um a lot of people doubt 
energy healing or spiritual things because you know they want proof on paper that it's real and there isn't really a lot of scientific explanations for it but the sensations i felt at the time i could simply not deny right. um and then um a while later i went back to the shop um to actually have a look around this time because i hadn't had a chance to and i was told that there's a lady who lived locally that actually taught reiki and that i might be interested in it so i took her details i gave her a call and there was another course happening a couple of weeks after so i put myself on that and went to the attunement and the first day was explaining about the basics of it what it did why it was beneficial and getting to know a bit more about it and then we finished the day with the actual attunement process and then we were able to practice on each other to get used to the energies and how it worked and feel it and the lady that I was working on I knew nothing about her at all apart from her name and as she was laying on her front and my hands I put them um there's a certain process to what the way you put your hands you start on top of the head and work your way down basically covering the chakras but as soon as I got to where her neck was my hands just got literally drawn put in place over her shoulder blades and there was, so much, there was so much energy coming out that the air between my hand and her back was thick with energy. But where, where I describe it is when you get two magnets of the same pole and they retract from each other, there's a bit of resistance, it's bouncy, mm -hmm. but it's it's quite solid. My hand and her back was doing that. I tried to push down as far as I could. I got about an inch or so from her back. I let my hand relax and my hand literally bounced on the air. <laughs> and that's when I was like, wow, I really understood you know, the power of it and how much it had worked. Right. Um, so, yeah, that, that really made an impression on me about through my experiences of how I trust these things because I've experienced them myself. Nothing has been preconceived. Nothing has been wishing for it to happen. It's just happened. I've reacted to it and I've realized the power of it. And then the best way I can describe it is it added colour to my life. Everything before was black and white, mm -hmm. but this colour filled in all the gaps and made me realise how special life is and how many amazing things there are in life, you know. And that was what started me breaking out of the patterns that I was in and understanding that I could better myself and have a better life. And then as time's gone on, through my experiences of what I've been through, it kind of inspires me to want to help other people to get out of those situations because I feel like I've done it and not being in a uh and a confident way but I'm no one special really in, in the grand scheme of things but if I can do it then I assume anyone else can do it unless there's a real serious reason why they can't because they don't have the capacity to or they're still suffering constant situations that keep them stuck where they are then I believe that anybody can change the way they think and the way they feel about things mm. if they want to. Um, and that's the thing that I kind of wanted to lead on to is people have to want to get to that place and also learn to be comfortable when you're there. Because when you're in a place where you're not happy, if you stay there long enough, even though it's not pleasant, it becomes familiar. Mm. And you can, you can convince yourself that you're in the right place, even if you're not, because your ego will get used to being in that thing and it will almost do whatever it can to stop you being able to break out of it because it's like well I know this I'm safe here because I'm comfortable with it so any new experiences or new learning it can be quite resistant to letting you change so sometimes you have to push it a bit to get out of it but with the right help and the right techniques because you know energy healing might not be what somebody wants so there may be psychological practices or more physical movements or activities to distract them from thinking about what they're thinking about just something to break out of that cycle but so what we're, whatever it is that you want to do work no so what we're talking about there is really the the, the multifaceted approach of dealing with trauma and we've all experienced trauma so how do we all start healing and um, we start i guess for me and i'm probably it's probably the same for you that when you began your evolutionary path when you began the path of healing, you began to look at look at all of the layers of the of the of the etheric body. So you were starting with the mind, where you start. And I know you're an NLP practitioner as well as as mm -hmm. so am I. So you begin to use affirmations. You begin to be drawn to books where you get to explore 
your thinking patterns and start changing those. And then you start doing perhaps yoga for me was, and breath work was another way mm. that I started to learn how to release stored trauma physically held in the body. What, what was that like for you? How, was, how did it um, It was mostly to begin with the feelings of things because as, as time went on and as I used Reiki more and as my mind began to realize that it wanted to change and make and feel things more um to begin it was quite unpleasant because there was a lot of anger that i'd had and a lot of frustration because there was a lot of questions of what if this had happened what if that happened things that weren't really answerable but the brain wants to know because mm -hmm. it's the way that you know you're you're in um psychology works you it people uh, human beings like to understand things and we're kind of told that if you don't understand it then you're lost in things and that could be frustrating in itself and again it can cr create those cycles which you can get stuck in mm. um but I, I i started to i just started to use my reiki to um i tuned other people to it and i put myself in that position of responsibility and started using my skills once i'd got to the reiki master level to be able to teach other people and enjoy that experience from the teacher perspective and it really is amazing to see people when they have to they go through that energetic change and are able to do it. I don't think there's anything quite like it. It's it's marvelous. Mm. Um, and then yeah, well, I, I I my logic finding NLP was I spoke to a friend who once well, so I did my second break achievement and I was so enthusiastic about it because it was the best thing ever to me. But he just didn't understand it and just wasn't really phased by it at all. And that made me think I need to potentially look into other methods that can still help people, but are easily acceptable to people that just don't understand or believe in energy work. Hmm. So I, I, I thought I'll look into different psychological practices and see what there is. I came across the neuro-linguistic programming concept, found a company that offered it. And I kind of jokingly, you'll probably understand this. I think they NLP'd me into wanting to do NLP. Because the, the wording, the, the way it's presented was so attractive. Mm. And then once, I, once I'd been on the course, and I understood the influence of language and everything that comes with it. I was like, ah, oh, that's clever. Yeah, but it was good anyway, but it, it got me into it. So, yeah, um, it was interesting for me to learn NLP because it was, to me, it affirmed things that I did anyway. It seemed to me just an extension of the person that I was anyway. Mm. Because even before I knew anything about therapy from a, quite a young age, people have been quite comfortable to just come and open up to me and tell me things. But when I was younger, I didn't really have any advice to give them because I didn't have much life experience. And through the NLP course and through understanding the structure of the way that you take on people's uh, ideologies and issues and that you cater for what they need to get them to where they need to be, mm. it was just a, a more advanced way of the way that my brain thought anyway. So it made me happy that I knew it made me realize that the way that I thought and the way that I did things, I was on the right track. I just needed a little bit of kind of tightening up on things. And that's what it gave me. So I added a whole new element to me understanding my life. But I was also sure to not overanalyze things because, you know, with NLP, you can be aware of so many different factors. But it took me a good couple of weeks after I'd done the first course just to, for everything to sink in because there was so much. Yeah. Uh, to integrate it into my life but that interesting process um really kept me occupied and then once i had the, a few of those eureka moments of mm -hmm. really understanding it that again added to my quality of life because i realized i had something quite powerful and very much fitting with me that i could use to help people mm -hmm. and also go on to study because one thing I felt was when my mum passed away, I dropped out of education because I just wasn't in the frame of mind to do it. So I felt I kind of been left behind where my other friends had gone to college, university, got jobs, etc. I was still just working out what I wanted to do. So to find the rake and find the NLP and find things I was interested in that could actually help me advance beyond what I already had, again, improved my life because I felt satisfied that I was growing. Mm. again and breaking out those cycles and moving far away from where I was and not in the direction I even thought was possible but again it was another amazing thing that was available in life that is part of the everyday in a way but is still 
unique and I feel that my lifestyle has been unique through the experiences I've had and the person that I am so I, I, I found things that added to that and added value to myself and helped my self-esteem and self-confidence mm. because I realized that I was allowed to support the way that I thought where when I was younger I was always a bit you know a bit strange to other people but as time's gone on and as I've experienced these things I've realized it's just the way I'm meant to be. Absolutely. And I just want to jump in here because there was a couple of things you said, which I thought was really powerful. So you talked about personal responsibility. And I think for me, what happened when I had my awakening and I'd come out of abuse and trauma and addiction and so many things, I suddenly realized I had the full power of one personal choice and the ability to change. There was the ability to change the way I thought which would change the energy and what I was attracting into my life I didn't feel like a victim so there was this realization that we could like switch from blaming the external world to taking the full responsibility for our creation and I think what you spoke about as well when you said um like you, when you were you weren't able to be in school and you felt a bit lost and you I think what you were talking about was like being dissociated and a bit numb yeah and this, and I guess what Reiki did for me, along with all of the other things was it actually activated my heart to open. And I began to be able to be, get super present and super in the body. And when I was in the body, I was able to then start noticing and feeling like you said, the pain, the anger, mm. the frustration, which then guided me to do the shadow work, to go and do the inner child healing. And the key which that you sparked in my mind that I want people to be aware of is the acceptance of all parts of ourselves and the healing of those wounded aspects. And once we do that, we step into some serious power. I wanna ask you a question. How do you feel? For me, this is my philosophy that I was taught when I was awakening, and it's something that resonates with me. When you realize that Earth is a school for soul growth and evolution, how does knowing this shift your perspective? Um, it gives life a very different angle where even though you realize the, again, um, you, we get, we're born, we live the life that we live until the age that we get to, and then we pass away. And in some people's eyes, that is it. And, you know, that's a concept which you know, a lot of people grasp and they think take every day, like, grab it by the hand and do what you can because you've got a limited time. And in a way, yeah, that, that is true. But you're only going to be this person you are at the moment once. But once you realize that your soul and you understand that you may like live different lives as different people it's quite a strange perception to have because it kind of makes you think well is there a lot of value to my individual personality at the moment and am I fooling myself by thinking I'm going to live beyond who I am now because you know that's a huge subject which I think needs to be touched on another day about where we actually go and you know different beliefs you know have different perceptions of that but through the um beliefs that I hold and I assume from talking to you, you hold about um the soul experience the way it's been explained to me is that the soul will be incarnated as at this time as a human for us or it could be as um an experience of another living thing like um an, an animal or a, a tree or you know it's anything that can have different perspectives because the way it's been explained to me is the the universe wants to experience is itself through these different things and learn what it's like to be these different things mm. because it's like it's created all the stuff it's like right so what if this happens what if that happens and through the soul's journey what the way it's been explained to me is the soul will want to learn things so it'll be reincarnated as a human being to live this life it may come back as another one to live another life but the basic thing that i've been told is and i kind of agree with is the soul needs to learn to really love everything yes not not in a the the just the romantic or kinship type but just to really love and appreciate the amazing abundance of all these miracle miracles that we have in front of us that as a, a human sometimes we can become kind of jaded by because we if we're lucky enough we have more than we need all the time and it becomes normal and we don't give it a second thought yeah um so again 
having things like having sad situations like losing people and and all the you know being abused being neglected yeah it's horrible to experience but it's an experience that the soul needs to have to understand what it's like to be in that position exactly and then it gathers all this information and then what I kind of agree with and it's been told to me is that eventually once it's learned everything can it can take the energy back to the universe in a package of like this is you know when I pass away it'll be like this was David Oliver this is what he experienced and then maybe my soul will have other stuff to learn or if not I I feel that it it will go to a different plane and, and maybe live a whole different existence that we don't even really know about the only thing that limits us is being in this form and having the senses that we do. But that's why I feel like discovering Reiki and healing energy and spirituality in general is, is something I'm very thankful for experiencing this life. And I've explored my past lives before. Um, when I was actually a child, about six or seven, um, I used to have a recurring set of dreams quite regularly about a few different scenarios that when I was younger, I didn't really think about it much, but when I grew older and thought back to them, I realised how out there they were for someone that young to really even conceive. So I tried, I went to a past life hypnotherapist um, to see what would happen. And they took me to a place that when I was in the situation, I recognised as somewhere I dreamt about. And I saw the same place, but a different aspect of it. And that's when I came out of it, I thought, oh, that's what those dreams are about. I believe they were lives I'd lived, lived before. And because my brain hadn't been conditioned to think any other way, because I was a child, I was able to pay attention to them. But then further down the line, when I had that realisation, I thought I didn't know at the time because I didn't really know what it was. But it kind of made me feel that I was, it, again, it affirmed that I was on the right track through going down this way of thinking, a way of living with what I'm doing at the moment. And since then i've had other past life regression therapy sessions and there's one that i was in and i could actually see my hands glowing with healing energy I, and but it was the 1800s so i wasn't allowed to talk about it you know because it would i would have got locked up but it kind of made me realize that i feel that my soul has had this inkling to get connected to spirituality or spiritual healing and not really being able to indulge in it through the past because of social acceptance and you know people realizing um what can and can't be done but i feel that this lifetime now being able to talk to you on the internet about these things it's normal and i'm now i'm really allowed to explore it all and work on it and do something with it in my life so i feel that it's an important stage of my soul's development to have that freedom in expression and freedom to explore and create these things that are part of our world because you know we are living it in our world but i also think it's explaining um like we're exploring the things beyond the practical every day mm. that aren't necessarily um easy to access unless you kind of want to practice it but are available so i feel that especially at this current time i feel it's an important time for you know you've had your experience at the time that you did and and a lot of people have been through similar things they've had their awakenings they've been through that pain said right that's enough or they've been moved to step out of it and explore it and then become more developed in their spirituality and there's a, a large culture now a modern culture of people who have modern ways of thinking but are understanding and putting um importance on old knowledge and indulging in things that they previously might not have but it's also important that we have you know things like this communication we can talk to people all over the world we can be made aware of yoga reiki um tai chi you know all these different cultural ways of spiritual work that previously wouldn't have had any access to or any chance to be involved in unless we traveled to those countries to um look into so i feel that the soul growth for the humanity at the moment is changing we, you know people are different to how they were 20 30 years ago in 
what they can do, their acceptance of things, their ability to practice these things and integrate them into their life and to adapt and develop and evolve. I mean, there's going to be over the next few years, there's, there's, at the moment that I've seen, uh, I've noticed there's a lot of children that are being born who don't even need to work at having these connections and these abilities. They're just born mm. with the, the whole tool set there. Um, so I think for myself, the idea of the soul um, learning is something that when I first heard, I thought, you know, it, it totally took away my understanding of what I thought was the general structure of life and what it was about. Um, so it's not, it's a beautiful concept and I agree with it, but I feel that anyone that's new to it needs to be having introduced to them, as you talked about different modalities in a way that they can accept and not just feel like their heads exploded and gone crazy about because it's a very foreign concept compared to the way that, you know, the normal logical way that people are thought of living as in having this one life and being this one person living and dying and that being it. Mm, I think, so, yeah. No, I was going to say, I think like <clears throat> the importance of understanding yourself as having these previous incarnations as well is that you have cut, we, cannot, we can't learn everything in one lifetime and every lifetime we may come back mm -hmm. to expand and evolve. And the ultimate is to really be able to operate in truth, whatever that means for the person, I can't yeah. tell people what their truth is. But one one of the things that is for me something that is intrinsic in humanity and that people forget because we have the ego and we have all of the pain and the suffering, the duality of of, of life on earth, yeah. is coming back to love, as you said, and coming back mm -hmm. to operate as spirit, as essence, in its highest and truest form. And I guess for me, it helped me to deeply forgive and deeply honor and accept all aspects, all uh, parts of humanity for adding something into the mix. Because when you realize that you were the perpetrator or you were the villain or you were the this or that, you've played all parts. So there is no good or bad. You can transcend these like these concepts and start to really move in a more lovingly a loving way that's that's how mm -hmm. i feel that it's it's helped <sighs> um okay so i'm just looking at some of the questions that we've pre we prepared uh -huh. with, um yeah i guess it was well okay how does shifting for what would you do you want to talk about a victim mindset and how that how yeah. we can shift from that into power through these yeah. processes. Yeah, well, um, the way that I perceived it was you talk about in um, spiritual terms. There's been a, a recently it's been the uh, concept of the law of attraction, which has been pre presented in a way that in a very positive mindset of if you start to believe something then if that builds up enough power and you send out the intention to the universe or you know, not not to a specific person but just from thinking it and thinking it loudly enough for it to be prominent and then saying it writing it however you want to present it to the world mm. if it's done with enough conviction and enough belief um and hope then it can make it happen and people might go well that just that doesn't make sense really but everything that we've created has been this actually kind of links back to um the reiki because my perception of reiki is that it's a raw, there's a raw energy behind everything yeah i agree yeah there for the taking it's neutral but it can be turned into something and once it links to our intention and our desires then we can make it happen because everything we've made you know someone once made us i was just an example so they made a fork right and i didn't have a name it didn't have any you know idea apart from what this person made but he must have gone to someone and said this is a fork and they've <laughs> 
right, I know it sounds simple, but everything had to start somewhere, Absolutely. doesn't it? And yeah. it, it had to take another person to go, yes, that is a fork. Right. And then tell the next person, the next person, until it becomes a really accepted part of life. Um, so, yeah, I don't want to go too far off track, but the, the, the victim mentality, it's more op the opposite, where everybody's oppressing upon you. They're, they're making you adhere to their beliefs and their actions and their morals and judgment and mm -hmm. perception of life. Um, because we are taught within our society in some ways to be respectful of and subservient to people that are considered holding authority over us. Yeah. Because there needs to be to maintain a general level of peace and understanding we've developed this idea that we have rules and regulations or even laws to curtail things that people might want to do because we have this idea of moral decency and fairness and respect for each other um so that can be sometimes distorted yeah. and people like there's people that I know at the moment who are suffering from a victim mentality because of the, the virus that's in the atmosphere at the moment. Mm -hmm. There is people who will not have, as soon as they were told to stay in and stay away from things, that's all they've done. Mm -hmm. And they have lived within however many square feet of their house and maybe their garden if they've got one and not left that for nearly a year and a half and they these are the kind of people that they're keeping themselves safe in their head but they're also victims of fear yes. and they are suffering some people are some people are getting completely ignored because they're not interacting with the world so maybe because they just don't have anybody that's aware that they're alive because they don't have any family or friends mm. some people do have options to go out, but they are so petrified of the dangers of what's outside that they don't give themselves, they don't let themselves do things, they don't get involved in things, they don't do anything that's healthy for them with regards to being out in public and generally interacting with society or even getting the exercise or the food they need because they're limited to what they've got that's coming to them. Um, so that mentality it's not like they decided to put themselves in that they've it's just created that be, and they've had to do it because they want to feel safe and sheltered and preserve their life but they're also denying themselves of aspects of life that would be good for them but i think as well I think what you're talking about is this lack of agency so like when we're in that victim mode we think that we're powerless we think that we can't there's no options there's no solutions we don't have our internal wisdom that will give us answers or guide us we're not connected to that inner inner well of 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 in uh, our inner master the highest in a cycle so you get stuck into yeah. feeling very limited and really we're very expansive and there'll be solutions. So yeah, it's that lack of agency and finding to be more proactive we, where we can activate that co-creative power with our imagination, with the wisdom that we learn, with our own trust in our own bodies and you know, and that kind of thing. All right, so thank you so much. We've got one. I, yeah, yeah, no, sorry, Bill. I just, wanna, I just wanna expand on that. My, my situation of breaking out of the victim mentality mm. was back in May last year, I, everything was shutting down, everything was scary, I didn't have a job to go to, I didn't have anything I could do apart from what was in my immediate surroundings, mm. so I picked up my phone and I decided to write a poem, nice. and I wrote, I wrote the poem, and I was like, right, I'm going to send this out on Facebook. And the victim mentality kind of wanted to go, yeah, but what if they tear you apart? What if no one likes it? What if this? What if that? And I, I thought, I don't care. I'm just going to send it out there. I put a nice background to it. I sent it out to, you know, the will of the world. And it had a couple of people interact. And I realized I like this. This, even though I'm not doing a lot, it's making me feel like I'm at least doing something. And then that became a daily ritual, I suppose, if you like. Yeah. And then eventually people, more and more people started paying attention. I discovered how many art and poetry groups there are on Facebook and joined a fair few of those and read other people's poems and shared mine. And then eventually I had people asking me when I was going to produce a book of poetry 
So I've done that. And now I've developed, um, I work with another person who does um, digital art. And we're both spiritually um, Hi, interested. Hi, Trevor. <laughs> and yeah, I, I didn't want to plug things too much. But yeah, basically, it's led to that whole situation as well. And we've now got a business yeah, talk doing about this. It. Um, well, it, I basically, I realised I wanted someone to add a good quality visual element to my poetry just to give it something different. So um, I asked a mutual connection of ours uh, if they knew anyone and they suggested Trevor and then I contacted him and we spoke what we wanted to do and it just seemed to hit off straight away. It was obviously the right thing in the right place at the right time. Um, so we have now worked together um basically my writing i've sent to him and i've had to kind of be careful of how much i've sent him because there's so many different deep concepts that i feel that it sparks off so many ideas in his head that we have to be careful not to try and overwhelm things and uh kind of curtail the energy and the ability to create because sometimes i mean he's mastered this through the experience but sometimes as you know if, if you can have so many things going on that you cannot get anywhere it's again that victim mentality it's that overwhelm you can be like oh what about this what about this and that's one thing you have to do is focus you have to trust yourself and learn to focus it and that's one thing that i've learned to do is with through the poetry i basically i blocked out everything that was going on in the world felt what i felt put into words and sent it out there and that's what people have connected to because they're experiencing similar things to what me so they can connect with it um, but yeah, it's with mine and Trevor's work, um, it's developed into more of a, um, a spiritual teaching and affirmation, I suppose would be the best way to describe it. I mean, you've seen some of the poetry that we've mixed with the art and you understand the, the collaboration. So it's been beautiful to develop a good friendship and to see my words given a pictorial representation and the fusing of the two together. It makes it very unique. And I feel the power behind it is very strong. So, yes, it's just another, it's another affirmation that um, if you work at things and you believe in yourself, things can happen that you couldn't, wouldn't even imagine. And, and then they can turn up awesome. and it's amazing. Yeah, such an amazing example. To, and I'm so glad that you mentioned it because it is that thing of acting on your divine inspiration, tuning out the external because otherwise we can get wrapped up in the fear, wrapped up in the noise, the, uh, the energy of other people's foreign energy. You zoomed in and you were like, no, and you tuned in and brought forth your own creative divine expression. And now you're spreading love, you're spreading wisdom, high vibrational words, you're lifting the energy of people who get to read it. And that, I mean, yes, knowing, knowing how to mute, be the neutral observer and observe when the ego is trying to keep you safe of, oh no, 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 I might, I might be shamed or I might be rejected. And we can clear, when you start to become aware of that, of the personalities that were developed over time on our paths as humans, we can start to, that's the thing about this work. We, we get to come back to our essence. We start breaking through those barriers and those internal limitations placed within us and upon us. And that's what it is to step out of the victim mindset. It's to really say, I'm gonna take full ownership and responsibility for my thoughts, for my behavior, for, my, for, for sharing my light and who I am and my gifts. Yeah, and that, that's what inspired it. I had that one moment of like, right, I've got all this time on my hands, I've got all this space, there's things that I need to work on that I've kind of put to the side because I've been too busy living life, and now I don't have to dedicate any time to anything apart from what's directly in front of me, and from doing that and making that one decision, it opened a floodgate and it just grew and grew and grew, and I'm not saying it's that easy for everybody, but sometimes it can be that easy, that one simple thing, that one little spark can clear a path and you can evolve beyond what that victim mentality can break that cycle and you can go to explore other things and sometimes yes it's unnerving and it's a bit scary but it's like with this interview as we were discussing before you know the, the nerves of doing it but once you get into it and now once we've done this I'm going to look back at, back at it and go well that was awesome wasn't it you know the, the worries that you have sometimes are way beyond the actual reality of what's going on and the potential that it can have for good things well, can I just and sometimes just, you have to let that happen. I've just managed yeah. to get onto Facebook. So usually this is new for me as well, because usually 
I can't see the the the, con, uh, the comments. And anyway, yeah. long doesn't matter about how I've got to see it. I can't see you. Okay. But right. in response to what you've been saying, um, Andrea says the ego is comfortable in the misery of the known. So what you were saying, mm-hmm. like familiarity. Yeah. And also how that can keep us trapped and con- consciously going round and round in repeated cycles until we clear that subconscious, which is a lot of the work that well, we both do. Um, and then she's mm. also written, we are magnets of energy. Wow. Hello, David. Um, Hi. Amusing, amazing topic. I love it. Glad to meet you, she says. Hi, Angie. Thank you. Um, yeah, no, that I wanted to actually um, talk about the, uh, the idea of being comfortable in that situation because everybody who lives a life yeah will listen to other people sometimes it's a bit of a dichotomy because we look to other people to teach us things and tell us things and you know to lead us in certain ways but at the same time we want to believe that we are right in our lives because we live in our body every day we like to think that we're doing the right thing even though it might not be necessarily the right thing but we you know that's why people do horrible stuff because you think how can you do that but somewhere in their mind there's some kind of logic going oh this is what i should be doing hence they act on it um so that's the thing someone can be in a victim place or they can even be in a dominant aggressive place and it's not necessarily the best for them but because it's what they know they will want to be there so again when you're trying to approach people to get them to change they you could be the best healer therapist whatever in the world and but until the person who you want to work with or think needs to work with you wants to do it themselves yes you're not going to motivate that change it has to be self-motivated in some ways and that's the difficult thing you know you can see people that are in difficult situations where in your heart it breaks because you know that it's not right for them but it's not your place to make that change for them absolutely and, that's and, what the, role the, healer, and the role of the healer isn't to to do the work the role of the healer is to remind or empower the person to step back into their own self-healing ability mm-hmm. um, but i think you also mentioned a really important thing as well i uh, I think what I, my, my vision for the world is unity, consciousness, and love. The more we expand in our consciousness, the more forgiving we can be, the more grace we can offer. And you made a really powerful point about people, sometimes people, I believe everyone's intrinsically good. And sometimes mm. people will do very bad things because they're in a place of protection and they're, they're being driven by fear. And what we can do when we've evolved in consciousness is start to see and understand how people are operating and offer grace. And I think that's yeah. one of the ways that we can change the world rather than judging and saying, you know, that person's bad. We can start to look at, okay, what trauma are they playing out and how can we help them uh, yeah. through love, through loving action and recognize when people are in defense. Now I did it this week as well. I got into defense and somebody said something to me and I was mm-hmm. like, I got into defense mode and I rec- but I can recognize it. And then I can go and I can do my work. I'll go back into the shadow or, and it's, it's when you can recognize and have, a, it's the awareness. Awareness is what heals and having awareness of ourselves and others is I think how we're gonna change the world. And I think that will bring us into our final question, unless there's something you wanted to say about that. Well, I think it leads us really quickly in to people think spirituality is all about love and light, but it's important. Mm. Why is it important for us to delve into the shadows in order to step into our power and our authentic light? And I think that's part of what it is, but anything to add and expand? No, no. Well, that's what you were saying about... um the understanding and the analysis of things is i kind of the experience of me being kind of feeling like i was in that bubble and kind of separate from things i actually you began to use that as a tool for understanding because i i managed to find a, a, a gap between being connected and being slightly outside of things not so far outside that i couldn't connect to it at all but just enough to be able to understand the bigger picture and analyze things in that way and and have a more um, developed and wiser understanding of the situations, which also then leads to mindfulness and being able to do what you just said and understand why people are acting the, the way they are 
And obviously that was enhanced through the NLP training of being able to analyze things from, from the tiniest details to the bigger picture mm. and everything in between. Um, so again, that shows that you don't have to necessarily be deeply spiritual or energetically connected just through um intelligent understanding of people's behaviors and that's something you know there's there's a lot of analysis on people's psychology mentality behavior yeah every single so movement true. every single way you look at the tone of your voice it's all key yeah. but yeah. what i'm trying to say is again you can be aware of those things but you have to find a way to rein it in and make it useful because otherwise you can it's you can just become overwhelmed by everything and not know what to do with yourself. Mm. Uh, you can imagine look at the world through the eyes of a newborn baby, all these colours, all these things, as in time you become used to and, like I said, almost kind of um, not jaded to, but very almost apathetic to in some ways because it becomes so normal. But if you were to look at that from, you know, a new pair of eyes, you know, a, a computer, for example, one thing and many things that I have, they're insanely complicated and you know to, to people understand them it's, it's nothing but mm -hmm. to someone if they first see that like, what is that you know if you took it 100 years into the past they would probably start you know they'd probably start praying to it or worshiping it or you know that they were told that in the highest regards because it is so magnificent um but yeah in in this modern day i think um well, what we were talking before about how you were saying about um, furthering yourself and being content with who you are, and what you're going through. That's what inspired me um, is I saw my friends going through these stages, as I said, of getting educated and getting jobs and stuff. And in my mind, that was how my life was supposed to go. I was meant to get educated, get a job have a family maybe get by a house and when I'm 65 retire get my pension live out the rest of my days in peace and that'll be it and when that didn't happen I was just I didn't really kind of know what to do myself but as time went on and I've realized what I'm supposed to be doing then I become content in who I am I don't want to get too far I just, felt no, I just think it's so important like this especially as the podcast about reframing what's possible as well it's like when we when you start to step into your own power and know who you are and begin the path of knowing inner knowing you realize that everything that's been constructed socially or pressed upon you from all these different ideologies you don't have to live a life of limit of what comparing yourself is suffering looking at what other people tell you is right is suffering <laughs> like finding yeah. your your own knowing and what your path is because we all have a unique path we all have our lessons and blessings and I, we can we can like for me when i gave away all my possessions in 2019 and get walked out of my job which was my whole life i suddenly yeah. realized hang on a minute like i had a friend who said oh you know what i'm i'm he's a psychiatrist and he said oh i'm gonna mm. retire when i'm 60 or something and i was like why I'm traveling the world now. Like we, we don't yeah. have to live in these ways that other people told us. We need to tune mm -hmm. in to our own truth and we will be guided. So I think that's a really positive um, point to leave on as well. And how yeah. that's what the power is. It's who am I? When we start, who am I? Why am I here? What have I got to offer? And following that path uh, to your inner truth. And um, mm -hmm. life can be super magical. And I love, that's why I'll just jump in with the gratitude rituals, guys, because part of the process for, the reason for that is to get you to open your eyes to the magic and the miracles, the wonder and the awe, and just see life with the eyes of a child, like you're saying. And it really can shift mm -hmm. a lot. It can shift us from the mundane to the magical. And that's a lot of my mission. That's what I'm about. That's what, that's what Absolutely. changed my life. And ever since, and I have found such peace and such joy from having that expanded awareness. And so mm -hmm. it's been really, really potent for me. Um, is there anything, an offer that you'd like to get? Is there a website you want people to check out before we wrap up? Yeah, um, the best thing I would say to get a general idea of the art that we've talked about and also the um, work that I do with my healing and my psychic work um, is Oliver hyphen and hyphen Barrett B A W R E W T S dot uh, co dot uk, and that's got the story of mine and Trevor's 
uh, collaboration. Um, it's got about me and some of the things that we've touched upon today in my path of how I've got to where I am and also a variety of amazing art. It's got the poetry book on there as well. Um, so yeah, have a look at it and just enjoy it. And we, we would appreciate, you know, if people want to become customers, then yeah, we'd love to see the wall art being put in places where it should be. And yeah, if anyone just wants to get in touch and know more, then please feel free to do that. Because and uh, I'd also yeah, we're, we're always happy to talk. Yeah, absolutely. So get in touch um, if the, any of that resonates. You want to check out the work. Also, just to, to let everyone know as well that um, I'm going to be doing my Reiki master training with David. So if you're looking to train as a Reiki master or do Reiki one and two, reach out to David. He's in the group uh, in the Mindset Alchemy uh, Facebook community and connect, connect, collaborate, contribute. Uh, again, it's just it's all about that. So thank you so much. Thank you. You're so absolutely welcome. Thank you. It's been an absolute honour and a privilege to have you here. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.